Hello and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is the one and only Hobo Tom. And I have a major announcement. Oh, shoot. Oh, look, fam. Oh, that was unexpected. It was like I pulled a hamstring. What the heck did I do to myself? Darn, I sat that wrong way. I'm sorry about that, folks. That was weird. Kind of wanted to curl my leg and my hamstring. Ugh, I'm getting old. Oh, where was I? Yes, I have a major announcement to make. And this is still going to be the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Program. Yeah, I'm going to be Hobo Tom. One bad leg. Oh, no, my cat's not there. But the major announcement, just like you saw with the sign that I just put up. My leg cramped up a second. That was weird. How does it does that? These chairs are good, but they're not the best. Oh, but what, what am I talking about? Unfortunately, there is no longer a girlfriend. But the positive side is that you out there in YouTube world could be the next girlfriend. Yes, you must like pro wrestling. You must enjoy being cooked for it because I don't allow women cooking in my kitchen. That sounds almost... But wait a I'm doing the cooking. I guess that's okay. Let's also enjoy red wine, pizza, and the occasional oh, beer is okay. Beers, that's not necessary. Red wine and pizza, though. And to allow me to cook for you, and, well, you obviously must like wrestling because you'll be on the hobo. And his girlfriend, wrestling show. So wrestling's a plus. And be in the greater day doing a beach area. Not going for three hour drives anymore. I'm getting 12 for that. As indicative of my leg cramp. So again, there's an open, <laughs> an open casting call for the girlfriend as part of the hobo and his girlfriend. Wrestling show. Careful with this leg. I don't know what I did at work. The gym or was it hoboing? We'll figure something. But again, so that's the major announcement. Um, a couple of programming notes. I know this week's kind of a slow week. I'll probably just have my normal, typical two wrestling shows. This is going to be Raw coming up. And, um, blah, 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 blah. SmackDown Live and the Mix Max Challenge coming up tomorrow night. In the 10th and 11th, again, it's going to be Monday Night Raw on the 10th. Smack, uh, Mix Max Challenge Smackdown on the 11th and the 16th it'll be my last review show because then a couple of days later about two weeks later my YouTube ban is lifted I can live stream again again that casting call if you want to be YouTube famous just like this guy right here and again, that goes if I ever do get monetized. If you are my girlfriend and I get 20 cents, that means you get 10 cents. Wow. I can do math. But again, always feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Also feel free to leave a comment, like, share, comment, subscribe. 
You may like this part. You may fully dislike this part. That's up to you, the viewing audience. Um, and then, so the 16th, I'll be doing my last review. On Christmas Eve, I guess I'm going to have a Monday Night Raw. So I'll be doing a Christmas Eve Monday Night Raw. Smackdown on Christmas. They don't, that's the only thing that sucks. One of the many reasons why I never... I always wanted to be a pro wrestler. One, I could stand the physical aspects of it. But I think just all the traveling... That wears me. That, that would just wear me out. And even though I'm not, well, I don't work on Thanksgiving. So, so that was one holiday. <sighs> Christmas is the one day I know I have off because retail hasn't canceled Christmas yet. I give it about three to four more years before that happens. We're gonna have. Again, the uh, Monday Night Raw, and Tuesday is going to be a dual show. Where I'm going to have SmackDown and probably a Christmas special wrestling show, and there will be probably some message from me wishing everyone a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone! Wait, it's too soon for that. So then, probably the next couple weeks. You shall hear my hobo song and the 12 Days of Hoboing, both sung by this guy, Hobo Tom. Of course, you know I'm a wrestling fan. I have my Macho Man t-shirt. You become my girlfriend. Might be the next b -b -b bullet babe for life. That or you just might be the Girl with the shiniest wizard. I like that's a good T-shirt. Well, I should do that <laughs> because no, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. I don't feel like fiddling with the computer that much tonight. Again, I'll oh, also if you are, if you do want to be the next girlfriend, have some computer literacy, have some good fun ideas. Again, feel free to email me at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And again, you could be the next girlfriend, this guy. And then on the 31st, my YouTube ban is lifted. I get to live stream again. And then depending on my work schedule, because that's going to be interesting. I might do the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom. Because I want to say that's the 4th. Is it? Yeah, that's Friday the 4th. Or is it Thursday the 3rd here? I don't know. Sometime around then. Ooh, that would be nice if it was Friday. And... I think there's the Super Card of Honor. I want to say it's the 18th or 19th of January. I'm trying to look at my calendar. Oh, also, if you choose to become my girlfriend, you will learn how to cook. So again, on the 24th, well, not so much the 24th, but for Christmas, because I'm going to be spending another Christmas by myself, well, me and the cat, the hobo's cat, Going to have, I figure I wanted to try a recipe. I'm going to have some bacon cheeseburger Wellington. So, again, ladies, if you need someone to cook for you, I'm the man. Um, so, I'm going to have some bacon cheeseburger Wellington for Christmas. I would like your opinion. Traditionally, on New Year's Eve, I've always had a kind of pizza and steak. I've always had pizza, at least, I've always had pizza. Steak every so often, or at least something pizza ish. Right now, I've seen three very distinct choices. I would like your opinion, and you will also learn how to make them here at the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show, or you'll be at the Hobo's Kitchen. And the first choice, again, you can feel free to comment or leave an email. 
the first kind of pizza if you want to learn how to make a crab ragoon style pizza just say cr pizza it's easy the second choice would be a shredded barbecue chicken pizza sounds good too and the third choice ooh, three choices so again so it would be um cr crab ragoon pizza cbbq obviously for the chicken barbecue pizza and then for the third choice, I'm, I might go non-traditional. And I saw a recipe for a tater tot taco pizza. That looked good. So if you would like to see how to make your own tater tot taco pizza, it would be T T T P. There we go, TTTP. That sounds okay. And if not, I might have one of those for my Super Sunday because I don't think I'm doing anything Super Sunday. No, oh, it might be working. That's a whole other thing. Wait a second, this has been way too long of an introduction. Only like pro shows do that. Again, if you want to be the next girlfriend, just send an email to hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I'm sure that mailbox is filling up right now. But no, let's talk about some wrestling. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. This is, was an interesting show. They introduced some stakes. General, um, oh, what's his title? General Manager Elect Baron Corbin has been doing his job. And we'll find out a little bit later in the show. But this show starts off in Texas. And unfortunately, there was the passing of, of the late President George Bush. So here's a little tribute to George W to George Herbert Walker. Bush. So that was a nice little tribute. And again, the WWE did their 10 bell, their, their 10 bell count. It was a nice touch. Again, do, I, again, Hobo Tom, or I don't want to talk myself as the third person, I'd like to pass my condolence to the, to the surviving family of George Herbert Walker Bush. He served his country well, um, both in the military and as the commander-in-chief. And he died, he, I think he was like 90-something, though. I mean, he obviously had a full life. 
And then it was, nice, it was a nice little tribute, and and I think I put in a nice little tribute on myself. So, hey. um, so again after that, um, Ronda Rousey was in the ring. Um, t uh, then uh, Tamina and Nia Jax came in. Oh, it was uh, first it was Ronda Rousey and Natalia. I'm sorry, and then t Tamina and Nia Jax. And did this match ever happen? Because I don't know. I think they rung the bell. Then it was just a brawl. Then the Riot Squad came out with a table. And I know TLC is in two weeks. There's going to be a lot of matches on this. Or there's going to be a pretty big, long pre-show. I guess it's going to be a Ruby Riot versus the tie in a tables match? I mean, I don't know why else the, the Riot Squad would bring out a table. Um, so, I don't know. I don't even know if it was a death to finish, baby. Because I don't think the match ever started, sweetheart. So, again, the Riot Squad came out with the table. So, for a while, it was, it was two on one. It was a Tamina and Nia Jax were just being on Ronda Rousey. And it was a three on one with the members of the Riot Squad being on Talia. And then eventually they just put Natalia through the table. And I guess she hurt her elbow. Oh, other news. You can see this guy, Hobo Tom, at the Raw taping on Monday the 7th in Orlando. Because I'm probably going to go to that. So you can look for me. I'll either have this Macho Man shirt on, my Hobo shirt, or if someone got my Christmas list, get a new Macho Man. Um, again, I'm part of the Friendo universe, and if you're in the Friendo universe, and I know Steven Larson like to do a meet meetup, I guess I can use use their name because I am part of the Friendo verse. If you want to do a, a a Friendo meetup there, I guess just put something on the Friendo verse, and I'll be there, or I do plan to be there. That's kind of my Christmas gift to myself. I got to go to a wrestling match. It'll be fun. Um, next we have Alexa Bliss. That was what I thought. I can't stand any more of this Alexa Bliss nonsense. This wasn't as bad. They, they just give Bailey horrible writing. It's like, if you had any superpower, what superpower would you have? Would you have? Bailey said, oh, I'd have the ability to make people disappear. In fact, I would make Alexa Bliss disappear. <laughs> Um, at least Sasha had a better line. She's like, no, I would, I would, um, I forget what the second question was, but I mentioned something about being the women's tag team champions. I guess they're going to have that belt. Um, maybe it'll come out. I think the Royal Rumble's the next big one. Big pay-per-view. So we'll see what happens then. Um, but right now it was, it was a match scheduled by Alexa. This is Sasha and Bailey versus Mickey James and Alicia Fox. Alicia Fox has long legs. Can't get over how long. Even Renee Young commented on how long Renee on how long Alicia Fox legs are. That confused me so much. Ooh. Mickey James must spend a lot on outfits because every week she has a new one too. So either that or that it's been like reused from her days in TNA. Or from when it was the time she was on the Jerry Springer show. Yes, I saw that too. It was it was a good it was a good match. I mean, I like the fact that it was okay. The wrestling was one or the wrestling was good. I'm kind of getting over the whole Sasha and Bailey thing. So it wasn't that bad. Again, Mickey James knows how to be a tag team wrestler. So she understands, again, certain aspects on distraction of referees. And Alexa Bliss knows how to distract referees from her time in NXT with Murphy and Blake when she was their kind of manager. So they understand the dynamics of, of tag team matches, which is always good. Uh, Sasha Banks and Bailey. There's Sasha Banks and Bailey. 
I mean, it was a fun match. Sasha eventually did get the hot tag. It was a bank statement into the Bailey to belly on Alicia Fox, who's just there to eat the pin. So, I mean, it was a good match. I just didn't get excited over this match. It's a ham sandwich match. Then it just kind of got recap heavy again. And I can only see so much because I already know what happened. And so many, so many promos. Towards the end of the, towards the end of the first hour, I wonder if people do this. Eh, eh, eh. No, I was doing that. I was flipping between that, Redskins versus Eagles for Monday Night Football, and the Ant Man. Ant Man seems to be a little bit more interesting than the promos on WWE. And I haven't seen the Ant Man yet. Then there was another segment with Alexa and Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey's going to find a partner. Good for her. Barry Corbin preview of why he should be general manager and not general manager elect. But I could have done without. Then for the third week in a row, they have the revival doing the job to Lucha House Party. And I guess Scott Dawson, I think he's a bald one. What am I talking about? I do need a haircut. Scott Dawson said, wait, 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 wait. We're not having this Lucha House Party Rolls. I'm a traditional tag team wrestler. A heel with a valid point. And the inch of the ring is like, oh, and by the way, this match is going to be under loose Lucha House Party rules. And they were going ballistic, which is what they should, because when it came down to the wrestling aspect, especially the technical wrestling aspect, the Revival are so good. They understand, again, they understand tag team wrestling. I don't want to see there be a third member of the Revival. That's going to get too old. Uh, the Lucha House Party is fun. But this is the third time, the third week in a row. You know what? If they did this maybe once a month or once every two months, I could deal with that. Then it would be fun. But to see it three times in a row, that's why I'm going to get the cheap seats for Raw. Again, you can see Hobo Tom in Orlando at the Emway Center January 7th at Raw. And I'll be up in the cheap seats. Because I am a hobo. Sneak in and flip, flip someone a couple of beer cans. And I get in. So, I mean, the action's good. Don't get me wrong. Lucha Hearts Party is really fun to watch. I truly do enjoy the Lucha, the, the Lucha style that they bring. I also enjoy the technical mat wrestling the Revival. Three times is too much, though. Therefore, this match has been downgraded further. To a can of soup. Again, it's too much, too much of the same thing. I mean, the fact that the Lucha House Party won for the third time, too. It would be one thing if the Revival actually won one of these. But they keep on losing. Why do I want to see this? Worth time? Oh, and then again, it's tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh. Where's my beer? Oh, wait, my beer ration. Again, you see, you had another Baron Corbin promo, the Gold Medal of Excellence. That's just a cheaper version of the timing. Then Dolph comes out. This is where Raw actually started to get pretty good, though. Most of Raw was, was kind of a snooze fest, but at this point, it actually gets good. And, and then it goes back to a little bit of a snooze fest. Uh, a little bit. 
But Dolph comes out and says, well, and of course, Drew's doing his promo. I did all, I did this, I did that. Dolph's like, whoa, I brought you in here, Drew. And Drew's like, you're nothing, Dolph. So it was really fun. This was finally that turn we kind of expected. I think this is a was actually a pretty good s semi slow burn. I mean, they should have built this up a little bit more, but it was good. They finally did the right thing. Thank you, WWE. So this led to a match of Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre, and for and with a promo beforehand, it actually really built up this match. And it makes sense. Again, wrestling is truly the theater of the absurd. You do need a little story to to progress with wrestling. Don't don't be impact and just tell total story. Because wrestling on impact is sometimes very good. Sometimes not very good. The storytelling on impact is great though. Uh, Lucha Underground Again, they focus more on story, and it's the reason why they're wrestling, which is great. But the vignette style they do is not going to work really on WWE. And then in the other extreme, you have New Japan and Ring of Honor, which is amazing wrestling. But you're like, why are they wrestling? If they said, oh, this has become the number, no, the number two ranked person, or at least gave it some stakes. And that's all, that's all they would have to say. And I say, okay, I understand this now. So they're treating this like, like a truly professional sport. And that's good. And, and if that's the way they want to do their business model, hey, I'm okay with that. I have no problem with just seeing good wrestling matches. If you're going to say, okay, so you, this is the, between the third, third, uh, third and fourth contender to, to move up a spot. I get it. So again, they just need like a really simple phrase. The ring announcer said, "Yes, this is for the third, um, th th third rank, whatever contender it is, for for the TV title." I can understand that, or or the no, yeah, yeah, so the TV title. So I can understand that. But again, this was a really good, fun match. No one's gonna survive that Scottish headbutt. I want to see a Samoan give a Scotsman a headbutt, and I want to see. I also want to see a Scotsman give a Samoan a headbutt, and I want to see who be who, who comes out worse for where. Drew's headbutt's vicious. Um, again, Finn Balor came out and actually distracted Drew for a while, and, and Dolph. Dolph was able to get some offense, and again, only after Drew being distracted, because Drew was just manhandling Dolph. I mean, this was actually a really fun match. It had a really good build to it. My only thing is that there's going to be a lot of non-title matches at TLC. It's going to... My fear is, is that it's going to be like a glorified house show. No one wants to see a glorified house show. That's why you go to a house show. Go to NXT or your local promotion. You want to see something special, something meaningful. But overall, though, this Dolph versus Drew match, this was really fun. Really checked all the boxes for me. It seemed a little quick, a little quick on the draw. But again, it's a fun surf and turf match. I don't even Elias promo. Of course, Bobby Lashley comes out then because you hear Leo Rush. Leo Rush is annoying, but but he's getting funnier, and I, I think he's on me a little bit because it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, again, Bobby Lashley does his pose, kind kind of moons Elias. So Elias goes chasing after Bobby. Um, he tries to jump Bobby Lashley from behind. Lashley says, "You don't you ever do that again." And Elias first getting tossed into the screen. He threw Bobby Lashley. Grabs his guitar because I guess he ran up with the guitar. <laughs> Leo Rush like jumped off the stage and said, I want none of this. Bobby Lashley went running behind the, the 
went running into gorilla position. Of course, Elias chased. Leo Rush thought it was safe. It's never safe when you have an angry guy with a guitar. Because Leo Rush ate that guitar like a champ. Good for Leo Rush. Then you have... Oh, Bobby Roode versus Drake Maverick initially. And then it became... Three on two. Because as Bobby Roode's taking on Drake Maverick, they show Gable in the backstage area getting beat on by the Authors of Pain. And then Baron Corbin runs up to the Authors of Pain and says, Hey, you realize this is a three-on-two handicap match. You have to be up there in the ring. So it's really a three-on-one match. Of course, Gable's already beat up. Bobby Roode just wants his road back. Very simple. He just wants to get through Ma Drake Maverick. I remember his name now. And for the most part, I mean, when it was just Rude versus Drake Maverick, it was a squash match. It was good. I was enjoying it. Um, so I started to beat on Rude again. It was th th uh, three on one, although it was a more traditional tag match because Drake Maverick was on the outside. They would have to, the authors of pain, at least would tag in and out. Gable would come back into the ring. Again, a good little back and forth there for a while. But the authors of pain showed that they were too strong. Hit the Super Collider on Rude and Gable and allowed Drake Maverick to get the pin. It was a good match. It was fun. It was different. It had, it had a reason for it, which is, I'll, even if it's the most absurd reason, you, you, you yearn hit in my robe, I want to beat you up. Hey, it makes sense to me. You yearn hit on my, on, on my leather jacket, I'm going to bite your nose off on you. That makes sense. So therefore, it makes sense that she's burger match. Then you have a Dean Ambrose promo. Dean has some new music. I like his new entrance. Don't like the guy, the goons with the gas mask. His gas mask was okay because I liked it because he called Houston a slum. So he healed it up. He got his heel heat. And he came out to, to, new, to, to new music, which I like. Uh, that's kind of like the Air Raid Siren and then his music. Then, of course, Seth Rollins comes out of nowhere, starts to beat him up. It was okay. Then the next wrestling match, you have Rhino versus Slater, because Barry Corbin was actually doing his job, which is always good to see. Because when you do your job, you get to keep your job. So he's looking over the financials and realizes that, hey, he can't keep both of you. You two are going to fight it out. And whoever wins, you get to stay. The loser, you're fired. I like that. Again, it's a very simple stakes. The general manager is doing his job. He's looking at the books. Wait a second. You're making too much money and you do nothing. You're making too much money. And you're doing nothing. Can't keep both of you. Fairest way to sell this is in the ring. So it might as well have been your, a your fired match. It was fun. It was, it was good. It seemed really quick. It made sense, again, if it had a little bit longer build and say Baron Corbin was, was doing his... Well, again, the promo kind of built into how he's doing his job. Probably could have taken another week or so and then had this match. Um, Slater got the pinfall and didn't look happy. He's like, I don't want to pin my friend, but I got kids. So... Slater wins in a fun cheeseburger match. And again, this match actually meant something, though. So it was good. It was, there was some quality to it. Had some meaning. Might have, might be, a, and actually had really good business meaning and not absurd logic. It's like, hey, we can't keep both of you. We can only keep one. Easiest way to do it? You're a fired match. 
Loser takes a hike. However, he Slater realized that he's not going to be a wrestler anymore. He's going to be a referee. Because Baron Corbin, after the match, gave him, gave him a ref shirt. So, you know, that was a fun cheeseburger match. Then you have the next match of Jinder Mahal versus Finn Balor. Um, Jinder said, this cannot happen. Take care of him. Om Shanti. Well, I just realized if I do get copyright violated, I can say that it's a national anthem. Can't copyright national anthems. I learned that. But that has nothing to do with wrestling. Um, so Jinder Mahal versus Finn Balor was fun. Well, again, the way you expected the match would go, when the pace was quicker, Finn, Finn had the advantage. With a much slower pace, it was Jinder Mahal. And it was, it was fun. And <laughs> Corey Graves even mentioned that the Singh brothers were doing their Bollywood boys dance outside of the ring. It's, it's it's somewhat new. It's a little bit different. Paul Cruz comes out, getting involved, cl clears out the, the the Sing Brothers, the Bollywood Boys. So that's good. Apollo Cruz is on. Um, overall, it was a, it was a fun match. It's always a pleasure to watch Finn wrestle. He's a very good technical wrestler. Jinder Mahal again kind of grows on you. This is not a good cheeseburger quality match. And then um, going backstage, Drew just jumps Finn. Just murders him, like throws him against some beer kegs. Has to hurt. And Finn, you could tell, I think probably landed funny because his whole elbow was all kind of messed up. This is kind of bruised. Nothing too bad. And then, of course, oh, early in the show, Natalia hurt her elbow, so she was going to try and get medical assistance. Whatever. Then the main, the main event of the evening. You have Nia Jax and Tamina versus Ronda Rousey and a partner of her choosing, who turned out to be Ember Moon. So again, this was a kind of this was a really fun match. It's something new, something different. They're involving Ember Moon more, even though Ronda Rousey never faced her in NXT. Um, I don't think Nia Jax ever faced her either in NXT. Um, Rhonda, again, she did like a Superman elbow from the apron to the ground. That looked good. Um, she's getting good. A lot of technical aspects as far as her wrestling goes, her selling goes. The only thing she's not good on and seems a little bit timid about is when she gets on the mic and the crowd chants for her. She kind of gets a little bit flustered. You can see her blush a little bit. She gets a little bit embarrassed when they chant, Ron, no, Rousey, and she's like, yes, thank you. Or even worse, like when Charlotte just whooped her and they start to boo Ron Rousey. She's not good at taking boos. Yeah. Yeah, that's, as a heel, I don't know if you'd ever see a heel Ronda Rousey, though. I don't think She's at that development where she knows how to get heel heat. I mean, because she, she's going to get booed eventually. I mean, if she goes against Becky Lynch, oh, it's a boo fest. It's going to be, Becky's going to kill you. Or something to that effect. But it's going to be, Becky, Becky. Or... Ronda Rousey is on Key Lynch. Becky's gonna kill you. Ronda sucks. Rousey sucks. Or, or something like that. And she'll get all flustered. Like she had, because when, when she got booed and people were cheering for Charlotte Flair, she looked thoroughly. So she has to work on that part. Um, Poor Emma Moon was there, just gonna be on for a while. Again, Nia Jax knows how to, how to be a tag team. Again, I think these two are cousins. Again, feel free to leave a comment so you don't know what you're talking about. They're not they're not even nearly related. I actually think they are somewhat, because I know it's Tamina Snuka, and Snuka's related, or at least, yeah, I think.
I know Snuka was somewhat related to the Wild Samoans. And the Samoans are related to the Rock and Roman Reigns. It's all one big island family. I want to say they're related. Maybe not first cousins. Is there such a thing as a cousin by marriage? I think it's something like that. Or like they're either second cousins or, or, or cousins by marriage. Cousin in law. Yeah, I made that term up. But for the most part, this was actually a pretty good match. Um, eventually, Ronda Rousey would do her MMA arm, t uh, her arm throws. Um, and eventually, finally got and and, and Tamina, of course, made, made 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 the error. She had the obvious miscue and knocked Nia Jax off the ring. Tamina ate the loss after an eclipse. And then she also tapped out to Ronda Rousey's arm bar, which is more like a bicep cutter. And Nia Jax was, was for a change, the, being the cowardly heel. She should, she's a superpower. She should, she should be do the heel that just beats you up. And they could still have her lose and have a protected loss that way. I mean, eating an eclipse and getting like that. Moan toss drop by Ronda Rousey. Hey, that could finish off most people. But overall, for the mo most part, this was a, this was a kind of a good go home for the main event. Again, this was a good cheeseburger match. So in a, in a nutshell, for the most part, the wrestling on Raw was solid. The problem is you have to get around all that wrestling. And all the promos, it just takes away from it. Alexa Bliss and Bailey, just, oh, please, just end it. Oh, just finish it off for now. i like to thank everyone for watching. Again, you can like, share, comment, and subscribe to the Hobo and His Girlfriend YouTube channel. Again, for a single lady in the Daytona Beach area, there's a new single guy for you. Again, must like wrestling. Must like some seer. Must. The must list. Well, I won't say must. But sh you should like pro wrestling. That's always good. You should like fishing. Science fiction movies are a kind of bonus, especially Star Wars and Star Trek. What else are must? What else are no? I won't say must, but but should. Being cooked for. Eating your man's dinner, which is always good. Again, just I, I, I. I I guess I have simple things. I just have eccentric things. I do like my red wine and pizza Fridays. I grill a lot on Fridays. I don't go to church. I try to go to church when I'm not working. Again, I am working, so that kind of does interfere a little bit with my social schedule, because especially when they call me in, because other people call out sick. People need to go to Michigan. There's six feet of snow right now. Spoiling me. Women are walking around the keys. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.